Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video I wanted to talk about some of my own personal observations over the years of planetary effects and how they physically affect us and how planets physically work with us. I think this is such a fascinating topic and it came through uh, on the comments if I just bring it up. Thank you so much for your comments, by the way. It means the world to me. Every time I get a like or a subscribe or a comment or anything, it just makes my day because this truly is a labor of love. This is something I do just because I'm so passionate about it and it's so great to interact. And I'm hoping that this video will get people to comment, really. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be straight away, but just like um, after some thought or you know you might realize oh yeah I've got a story to share uh, it would be really great to hear your thoughts on this too but because of the comments lately I had one from a very good friend now Ayush great to meet you great to e-meet you um, thank you so much for your comments and I know that you mentioned um you know how the moon can create a tsunami in a giant ocean and you know um, and how of course the moon pulls on the body of water within us that was a great observation that you made and I think that's definitely um, you know yeah how it affects blood pressure water retention in the body absolutely a lot of people who are into astrology definitely talk about that and I think in one of my comments back, I might have mentioned something about how, you know, I, I know someone who personally gets pressure headaches when there are far too many clouds in the sky or, you know, um, and I, I think that that's something that animals do too, isn't it? Like dogs can kind of sense when there's a thunderstorm coming. I know that for sure. I personally observed that one when I was growing up in Queensland uh, our family we had this big veranda and you know it would be a bright sunny day um, and then out of nowhere this dog would turn up and we lived there on the back of a farm so and our next neighbor was quite a walk away so you know every now and then a dog would just turn up randomly on our veranda and we were able to learn that a few hours later there'd be a huge thunderstorm and that dog was very clever to find our house and to just hang out with us for a while and the next day they'd usually be gone. So I think that happened twice while we were there and we were only there for a year. So there's definitely something to all of this. So I got a bit of paper and I started just jotting down some notes as to what have I observed over the years. Um, and I've definitely been observing things in my own life since 2008 which is when I really got into astrology um, kind of around the time of my Saturn return and I keep observing to this day now I have my own software that I can look up very precisely and see what's happening hour by hour minute by minute if I want to but um, definitely since 2008 I was observing when I was studying the western system back then so then I used to observe things like retrogrades and I used to observe things like planetary configurations big squares in the sky and things like that so I thought I'll just go through my little notes here I've got a series of notes and I hope this is an interesting video in terms of what are the very visible physical effects um, and these are definitely things I've observed so retrogrades starting with retrogrades. I have observed just about every retrograde since I learnt what they were all those years ago. Have I ever observed anything at all? And the answer is I have observed nothing. That's right, I've observed absolutely nothing when it comes to a retrograde. I know sometimes, well, a couple of times maybe technology doesn't work or this or that, but nothing, I haven't observed anything that is that's for sure or that's concrete or that um, 
that is a problem around retrogrades. I will continue to observe this uh, as I do, but I, I continue to find that these really don't affect me at all. I don't have any retrogrades in my birth chart. Maybe if you do, maybe it impacts you more. I would love to hear if you have any stories where you know that it's a retrograde that's impacting you. I'm not saying that this wouldn't have an effect for people. Of course it would. But for me personally, from my personal observations, I actually haven't particularly seen anything. Um, let's have a look here. Eclipses. Yes, I have definitely personally observed the effect of eclipses. Absolutely. And I have a couple of examples that I'm going to share with you. Um, and these are, both of these are actually close friends of mine. Uh, and these are things that happened to them. But I thought these were two really good examples. One was the lady that I actually, um, who helped move me into this apartment. She was the real estate agent for this apartment, would you believe? And she was really into astrology. She was really into Western astrology. She actually told me what my moon sign was in the Western system. I didn't know at that time. And um, she had a really cool story. She told me about how an eclipse really personally impacted her. Basically, um, you know, she, she'd met the love of her life. She thought, yes, this is the man that I'm going to marry. She was crazy about him. He was crazy about her. And what ended up happening was he got this dream job offer that he always wanted in Australia. So he left the United Kingdom, he moved to Australia. And they were still together as a couple. Um, I think he even moved his whole family out there. His mum was there, everyone was there. So what happened was he, I think he quit his dream job actually to come back to London to be with this lady who became my friend, I, I must admit, we haven't, we've lost contact since, I was trying to think since when, since about 2012, but we were good friends for many years. And um, yeah, so he flies, he flies from Melbourne to, um, to London, basically. In between, he does a one night stopover in Singapore. And she was, she was basically an astrologer. She was really, really good. She really knew the system. She really knew the Western system. She was able to predict things. She was amazing. Anyway, she observed that when he stopped in Singapore on that night, there was an eclipse. And when an eclipse happens, you know, what happens? Something gets eclipsed out of your life. It's gone. That is definitely a physical effect of eclipses. She lost a relationship because of the eclipse and she firmly believes that it's connected. And I, I believe that story. I think that is um, absolutely, that can happen. So, you, you know, that's a physical effect of a friend, something that happened to someone close to me. Another friend who I know really, really well, uh, she, this, this was a phenomenal story. Basically, she was due to move in with a guy who she had been going out with for some years. He had an ex-wife and the house that she was due to move into was his house, but it was full of furniture that had been chosen by the ex-wife. It was making her feel uncomfortable and she said to the boyfriend, look, can we just change this stuff. Can I buy new stuff? Can we get rid of this? I don't want all this old stuff hanging around. She was into feng shui and all that kind of thing. And so am I. I think that stuff's great. Um, I would feel the same, actually. I, I thought about that this with her situation. I would totally feel the same as her. And um, he said no. He was being very, very stubborn. He kept saying no. I don't want to change the furniture. This is ridiculous. Why can't you just accept this furniture? And she was pretty unhappy about this, obviously. Uh, so anyway, they, they kept seeing each other. She was still thinking, well, I guess I'm due to move in there. She wasn't happy about it. They'd gone away for a weekend. On that weekend, an eclipse happened. Now, what? how did that materialize physically? 
what ended up happening was this guy goes back to his house she goes back to her apartment he goes back to his house and lo and behold the entire house is flooded a pipe burst on that weekend when the eclipse happened a pipe had burst and something like two metric tons or something had fl flooded through the house um, it was so everything was so wet and damp that every single thing had to be taken out of the house and not only just every single physical object but um, even like the staircase had to be taken out, the kitchen had to be taken out, the toilet, the bathroom, everything, every single thing had to come out. And the insurance paid for brand new interior. So they ended up choosing all this new stuff for that house, which was, must have been very exciting. And, um, and the insurance told them that the house will be ready in about five to six months. Now, five to six months, what do they say when an eclipse happens? They say an eclipse, something gets eclipsed out, right? Uh, or something gets thrown out or something gets changed in quite a drastic way. This guy basically got eclipsed out of his own house. He couldn't live there. So the insurance paid for a rental house for this guy. And he lived there while the house was being done. The insurance said it would take five to six months to complete the interior. And that's another thing that they say with eclipses, that the shift that you're gonna go through is probably gonna take about six months to complete. So I have seen that with my own eyes. I know that that um, friend of mine, she would talk to me a lot about this situation and uh, you know, and I know she doesn't mind me sharing it right now um, and yeah I think she found the whole thing pretty frustrating the relationship didn't work in the end anyway but hey you know I think the universe was trying to help her out I think the universe kind of um, agreed with her that was one of the conclusions we came to and in fact through their group of friends people would say to her that gosh are you like a witch or something like she had this reputation for being you know very spiritual and powerful so I thought that was a neat little story there. Full moons. Do I find any personal effect, physical effect? Yes. I have been noticing more and more as I tune into the planets and the stars and as I keep doing this work, I have found that full moons do affect me. And how do they affect me? I just can't sleep. That is one physical effect that I'm experiencing. I can't sleep when there's a full moon. And I, I'm not sure. There is a lot of extra moonlight that comes through the window. So I'm not sure if it's light. Uh, I've learned to sleep with the mask on. So it's this lovely, I've got this really nice kind of, the fabric is beautiful on that mask. So I use that. But um I definitely can't sleep during a, during a full moon. And I came to realize I couldn't work it out. I hadn't quite connected it with the moon at that time, but I was tuning in on a regular basis to Doreen Virtue. She was doing these lovely, I, I don't really watch her anymore. I used to watch her for a time. And she was the one who got me to click, ah, it's to do with the full moon. Cause she said that some of you are full moon sensitive. And that's when I first heard it. And that's when I joined the dot and I realized, oh, of course, that's what's going on. So, yeah, I definitely have experienced um, a physical effect from the moon. Shadbala, sun Shadbala. Okay, this is an interesting little one that I jotted down. Um, sometimes, I, well, the times when I have thought that someone has a strong sun, I have been correct, bizarrely. Um, so when I was learning about the sun, I was learning about how the sun actually kind of sizzles things, it burns things, and apparently it causes baldness in men, right? Or a receding hairline for men. That's one of the physical effects of the sun. And I remember thinking, I remember started looking out for that, started looking out for people who had a thinning hairline. And I think soon after learning that lesson, 
um, here in the United Kingdom we have all these magazines. You go to the supermarket and there's like, you know, you're buying juice or something, but there's a rack of magazines. And who was on the front cover? Well, it was Prince William and Princess Kate. So Prince William is on, on the cover of this magazine. I take a look. I'd probably just learnt this thing about Sun Shad Bala. And I thought to myself, he's got a very thin, you know, it's quite receding. And I thought, let me look him up. Let me see what his Shad Bala is like. And sure enough, I'll bring it up now, actually. I'll bring up the three examples that I, I came up with. Because it's funny, like two or three examples. When I'm learning a principle, there'll always be two or three case studies that kind of crop up out of nowhere. Um, let's bring him up, Prince William, who has a strong son, Shadbala, very powerful son. Interestingly, he doesn't have anything in Leo as such, but his son, Shadbala, is the strongest and it's quite high. Um, and he definitely has a receding hairline. The other person I remember thinking of was Lee Kuan Yew who I was looking at images of on Google and I remember thinking, I bet he's got some strong sun or some Leo going on. Sure enough, he does. Uh, let's have a look here. Lee Kuan Yew. Check, check, check. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, he's got sun in Leo, sun in his own house there. Very powerful sun. And let's have a look at the Shad Bala just to... Yeah, it's very strong. And the third person, now this one, when I was creating the song series, I remember um, I wanted to use a song by Sting. I mean, I was checking out all artists for that song series. I remember writing that series was so much fun to do. It was so much fun to create. If you haven't seen your song, then have a look in my history or playlist or whatever. You'll be able to find your song. I've dedicated a song to each sign, so do check it out. But when I was doing the research for that series, I remember doing research on um, a song by Sting called Brand New Day because I wanted to use that song for Leo. And one of the lines in the song is something about, we'll sell the stock, we'll spend all the money, we'll burn it up, you know, we'll burn it up, let's do this. So I thought, Sting, he must have, he personally must have quite a lot of Leo energy. And sure enough, I'm actually, I'm going to bring him up now. It's been ages since I've looked this up. But I'm pretty sure he's got three planets in Leo and I'm pretty sure they're in the second house. Um, oh, there he is. No, I was going to say I haven't got it. Yeah, he's got three. So he's got uh, Venus... Mars and Ketu in the second house in, in Leo. And I'm sure he's got quite a strong... No, he doesn't. Okay, his is not great there. Let's have a look at Ishta Kashtafala. I'm going to look at some more things. But I know definitely the Leo energy is strong in him because also you notice that he's, um, he's got a thinning head of hair. Uh... And there's one more thing I want to look up here. Detailed Shadbala. He must have a... Okay. Wow, sun's providing some obstacles for him. All right. Well, maybe the obstacle is, I don't know, less hair or something like that. I don't know. But that is a physical effect that I've personally observed uh, in people. And it's a, it's, a, it's a physical thing, isn't it? It's like, you know, the sun. I know that um, Clive James, one of my favourite, favourite all-time writers and presenters and personalities, he's just amazing. He said that men go bald because they, they've just got so much testosterone that it sizzles the hair away. And, of course, he would say that because he's a man with thinner hair, uh, which... Hey, I think it's great. I, I don't mind any which way. I think it's all wonderful. I, I have no preference. So I hope men out there don't feel like it's better one way or another. Uh, of course, Clive James was trying to say it's better to not have 
hair, which is, uh, he would say, because he doesn't have. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I digress. Okay, what's the last thing? I don't want to talk way too long because, oh my gosh, it's already, we're already 20 minutes. Oh my God. Okay. This is long and I've got to do this before the four minutes because, you know, my camera keeps dying at 24 minutes. Okay, let's go. So essential oils. I recently bought this lovely little, I don't know if you can see it. I should probably do this. That's what the YouTubers do, isn't it? They put their hand in front of, so you can see it. Frankincense oil. This I bought for £3.99p. It is brilliant. And I bought this. I don't know why. I just got this kind of brainwave. I got this idea. I got this, as spiritual people would say, download to buy this essential oil. And I did a bit of research on it. And in fact, it's really good for um, adding to like hand creams and face creams and things like that. It's just really good. It helps the skin. So I bought that um, seemingly on a whim. And then I got the idea that I wonder if there are essential oils connected with planets. And there indeed are. And I was amazed to find out that this oil is connected to Saturn. And that makes so much sense because I'm really working with Saturnian energy. Um, if you'd have seen my comment in last time's video, you would see that I would have said that I've got Saturn Mahadasha coming up. I do indeed. I'm pretty excited about it actually because... I mean, look, it's going to be a mixed bag. I know that already. I've, I've looked at where my Saturn is everywhere and it's, you know, one day you read good news, the next day you read bad news and, you know, there's, there's a lot of news there. So it's going to be a mixed bag. But overall, I think it's going to be good. I just have to work hard. I know that. So um, I don't have to work to make the most of it. But let's take a look. So apparently frankincense oil is definitely connected to Saturn. And I've done some research on various websites. And I've pulled together a list of essential oils for planets. So I'm just going to read these out super quickly so that you can get an idea of what kind of essential oil is good with what kind of planet. So if there's a planet that you have a strong affinity with or that you just love or it features strongly in your chart, you don't even need to have seen your chart in order to know which you have an affinity for. I know so many people who um, they just have an affinity with a planet. And sometimes it's irrational and they don't know why. And you know what? Your intuition is the best guide in the world. So go with that. Go with what you're liking and what you're feeling. So the sun. Let's start with the sun. The sun essential oils are cinnamon, camphor and eucalyptus. The moon essential oils. We have white flower jasmine, gardenia sandalwood mars we've got here it just says spicy and heating oils that is interesting i'm kind of even thinking castor oil i definitely use castor oil um, as an additive for things because that's it's just amazing mercury Yes, I do. I love these mercurial ones. Dulce, which is basil, I think, in English, and peppermint. Peppermint, the best oil. Even if you're not interested in the planetary connection, this is one to always have at home. If you ever get headaches, if you get shoulder aches, neck pains, any kind of pain, peppermint oil is the one. Uh, Jupiter. What have we got here? Jasmine and sandalwood. Venus, we've got white lily and rose oil. Saturn, we've got frankincense and sage. I've always got sage oil at home. I've, yeah, I sometimes put that, I make my own like um, kind of cleaning, you know, the those bottles and you add, I just add a bit of dish washing liquid and some essential oils and that's my cleaning product uh rahu what have we got here sage and frankincense again so very similar to satin which is true because they say that um rahu is similar to satin and ketu is similar to mars let's have a look at what ketu's got going on can if the mars one yeah that didn't really work out they didn't really say 
Uh, Keita, we've got here Juniper and Ginger. Hi, everyone. The camera just cut out. I knew that was going to happen, but we were at the end anyway, and I was just going through the Ketu oils, essential oils, and I've got a list here of Juniper, Ginger, and Bayberry. But as I said earlier, I'm pretty sure I said this earlier, that Rahu is similar to Saturn and Ketu is similar to Mars. So the Mars oils, we had that spicy kind of thing was mentioned, um, heating oils. I would, I mean, I'm kind of thinking castor oil even. I know that's kind of more of a base oil, but it's so hardy and it's so thick. And I know that when I use it, um, it does promote hair growth and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking castor oil could be added to that list. But that might be one that I do some research on. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your comments as well. And really, I would really, really love to hear what your, um, what your personal observations are as you study the planets, as you tune into the planets, as you learn about them and as you see how how they affect you physically specifically physically um, it's a good one to check out obviously symbolically there are many many uh, things that we can talk on and on about you know when we go into the abstract world and when we match the abstract of our lives with the symbolism of what's going on in the sky what I mean by that is like the abstract things of our lives like heartbreak or we're going through depression or we're worried about things or you know the abstract the things you can't touch but what I'm quite interested is in the physical effects the actual physical things that you can see and touch so like um, sun producing thinning head of hair there's also satin affecting bones you know things like that um, and I suppose there are I mean Mars People with strong Mars are good surgeons. And uh, I mean, there's loads of things, there's loads and loads of things. So, I mean, I could, I could go on for another hour, really. Uh, but I just thought I'd jot down some quick notes of um, things to look out for and things I've observed myself in a physical sense, in a symbolic sense. Oh, my goodness, I could talk for days. But <laughs> this was just a little something. And especially in response to the comments of the last video. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on this topic and stay tuned. There's a lot more content to come. I've got so many things planned. It's just a matter of finding time and, and then putting the video on and getting it done. I, I have so much I want to record, but it's... Also, today opened up for me. I didn't even have today. I was supposed to be uh, at work today, but it opened up. The day shifted, so I was so happy because it meant, yay, I could do a video. All right, well, I'm going to let you get on with your day, but thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.